Hello everyone and welcome to this week's episode of Channel 3 Sports. Thanks for tuning in. Arizona basketball clinched the regular season Pac-12 title. The NFL Combine has begun and draft day is just one month away. And who in the sports world is hot right now and who is just not? All this and more coming up on UATV Channel 3 Sports. <laughs> Welcome to Channel 3 Sports. I'm your host, Zoe Walkowitz. Let's get to know our C3S analysts, camp student radio announcer Justin Spears and Arizona sports personality Kyle Shook. Thanks for being here, guys. You know, it's great. Finally, March, not February. March is here. March Madness. I'm excited. It's my favorite time of the year, March Madness. I was about to say the same thing. Favorite time of the year. Well, speaking of March Madness, <laughs> all the hype around Arizona basketball does not just fill the atmosphere here in Tucson but it is apparently contagious nationwide. ESPN and sports media around the country cannot stop talking about the number five drink Arizona Wildcats. If you're a college basketball fan, I know that you tuned in on Saturday night for an action and passion filled game with Arizona and Utah facing off in Salt Lake City. Utah was favored to win, but they fell at home in a thriller, 63 to 57. Utah lost a lot more than just a conference game. The Renan Utes snapped a 18 home game winning streak and lost the title of Pac-12 champions. After three questionable losses this season, which were all on the road for Arizona, they finally pulled off a huge win on the road. So with just two games left before the national tournament, how is Arizona looking, you know, and being a threat into this national tournament? Well, Arizona, they are hitting their moment at the right time. We all said at the beginning of the season, can Arizona when will they be able to hit fifth gear? They have finally hit fifth gear. Everybody knows their role on this team. Gabe York is starting to knock down shots. TJ McConnell might win Pac-12 Player of the Year. You know, and Stanley Johnson, he's starting to become that alpha freshman that we all know. It's just Arizona is just hitting that right spot, and that's what championship teams do. They don't just play all the way through. They find that fifth gear right there at the end of the season, and they just turn it up. And even though Arizona might not get a number one seed, a number two seed in a bracket with Villanova as the one seed could be ideal for the Wildcats. Yeah, it's really, March Madness is really about who's hot at that time. It's not really about what's happened beforehand. Obviously, the seeding is a big factor in it, but what happened before the tournament is not as big of a deal as how you play in the tournament. And uh, I think whoever's hot in the tournament is going to end up winning it, but Arizona has been real hot lately. They've been, uh, they've been playing real well. They've been playing great defense, allowing only 58 points per game, so... We'll see yeah, you do. know, I definitely, that's a great point to bring up. Yeah. It's not how well you've done, you know, all season or in your conference or anything. March Madness is definitely, and you know, that's what makes it so fun is who's hot right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, Who makes the run? You know, Arizona, like we've talked about, and like we've also shed a little tears, you know, when they lost to ASU, yeah. <laughs> upsetting Hated and a that. bad loss. But, you know, they're hot right now. And I think hands down we can say that. Well, it's just like, this kind of reminds me of going back to the 2010 season when Arizona had Derrick Williams, that UConn team, they weren't they weren't on it until that last part of the season when they finally got into the Big East tournament and uh, faced off against Louisville, knocked them off. Then got to the tournament, which was led by Kemba Walker and mm -hmm. Jeremy Lamb. They went all the way through. They cruised through. They battled it out. And they just, they just hit that spot right at the right mm -hmm. moment. So. And the actual the all time lowest uh, seeding for the national championship game was actually last year with the seven and eight seed playing uh, Kentucky and uh, UConn. And UConn ended up winning, obviously, but that was the actual last uh, lowest ranked teams that played in the national championship last year. It shows you that anyone can make a run. Anyone has a chance. And yeah, it's UConn not just the number so one seed. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, so. last weekend, college game day came here to Tucson for the first time in years to watch Arizona basketball live. The iconic game day broadcasters like Jay Williams and Jay Billis we're wearing shirts saying, bear down for Indy, which is pretty much hinting that, you know, they believe Arizona is a top contender to make it to, the in to Indianapolis for the Final Four. Well, in my opinion, and I'm sorry to say this in front of Wildcat Nation, but I've already begun to mentally prepare myself for Arizona to make an early upset out of the tournament. <laughs> so if Arizona does, and I say this while holding back tears in my eyes, <laughs> what other teams could potentially be Final Four bound? I'm going to have to go with a team that Arizona is extremely familiar with, considering these guys are always in the Wildcats non-conference schedule. And this team is San Diego State. San Diego State, I know, is the Mountain West tournament. They just lost to Boise State 
Um, they, but the Aztecs are 10-3 and three over the past dozen games and even got a W over UNLV, which UA lost to. Dwayne Poli II is back in the lineup after a two-month absence after collapsing in, de- in December. So adding a player <clears throat> like Poli back in the lineup with a streaking team, exclude the loss at, B- at BYU, or excuse me, Boise State, this Aztec team, they can be definitely deadly, so watch out for the Aztecs come March. Yeah, you know, I definitely say, see that. And last year, especially for Arizona, they had to do that. Mm-hmm. And this SDSU team just always, you know, just slyly creeps in. They, they, they always get <laughs> But they're team there. Yeah, exactly. They're... That's what I'm saying. What about you? What do you think? So I hate to do this to all the Wildcat fans out there, <clears throat> uh, including myself, but I think that Wisconsin is one of the major contenders this year in the March Madness tournament. Now, if you can bring back and remember some painful memories from last season, Arizona lost to the Badgers in a heartbreaker (coughs) 64-63 in overtime. It was in the Elite Eight round of the tournament that that happened this year. Wisconsin is returning their uh, their play, most of their players from last year, excuse me, and uh, including one of their veteran senior seven uh, seven footer centers, uh, seven foot centers, Frank Kaminsky. As a big guy down low, you would think that Kaminsky mostly just helps his team out by defending the glass. And, and grabbing rebounds offensive and defensively. Uh, but the reason Kaminsky is so valuable to this Wisconsin team and arguably is one of the best power forwards in the nation, is one of the best power forwards in the nation, is because he can also shoot the ball. He's similar to, uh, I think, similar to, uh, oh gosh. Oh my Dirk Nowitzki. Dirk Nowitzki, thank you. I'm forgetting his name. He's one of the most famous basketball players. <laughs> anyway, uh, so he can shoot the ball really well from deep, from, from wherever. Kaminsky leads the, uh, Kaminsky leads the Badgers in both field goal percentage and three-point percentage. He can also shoot the long-range ball, but he uh, can also put the ball on the floor uh, and and drive down the lane. Uh, So this, with the way Wisconsin has been playing and the talent Kaminsky brings, I don't know how Wisconsin can't get back to at least uh, the Final Four like they did last year. Yeah, you know, and that's scary to think about (laughs) is, oh, man, you know, that was a heartbreaker. Clearly there's riots here at the University of Arizona. (laughs) Well, because Kaminsky is just a matchup nightmare. You know, he's seven feet tall, and the fact that he can shoot, and that's the reason why I believe the Wildcats knocked off the Badgers is because he's seven feet tall, so Zeus obviously is guarding him. He brings out Zeus, (laughs) which makes him very uncomfortable. So it's it's just a defensive nightmare for any any big guy yeah, that goes you, against. You know, Wisconsin. Brandon Ashley's been over here the past few games just knocking down threes like it's no one's business. Mm-hmm. The big guys can shoot now. I the know. The game has evolved. They're getting they're get, ready to go to the NBA. They're getting a stroke, baby. They're getting a stroke. <laughs> well, we now move in to our hot or not segment, and in this game, we will judge any sports player, professional, college, or even just some YouTube famous person, if they are flaming hot or just completely not. So, spring training is in full swing, no pun intended, and Sports Illustrated has recently voted the Washington Nationals to take this top spot on the rankings. So, hot or not? I'm going to go with hot. I don't know how you can't go with hot with what they've done in the offseason. They actually added Max Scherzer, who is one of the best, probably top three best pitchers in the league, starting pitchers in the league. From and, my uh, high school. Is he? Wow, <laughs> yes. that's, that's awesome. Did you get to see him play in high school? No. no? Oh, <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, they signed him. They, they have the best starting rotation in the league right now, so I think they're going to do well this year. Well, that and you just got to <clears> – Bryce Harper, probably one of the best <laughs> up-and-coming players in Major League Baseball. He's just, he's just dynamite in the fact that, like you mentioned, Matt Scherzer are coming in. There should be no question that the Nationals should be running the tables in the National League, but – be careful. You know how the National League is. They're pretty gritty. You know, watch out for teams like the Cardinals, who, oh, yeah. who just added Jason Hayward. <laughs> mm-hmm. And it's just, it's it's going to be a fun season of baseball. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, you know, the Nationals, they, don't get me wrong, have a solid starting lineup. You know, they have Bryce Harper, Ryan Zimmerman, you know, Danny Espinosa, like so many guys that big names everyone knows. But I'm just going to go with the knot on this part because the National League is so stacked. So good. So stacked. I mean, I'm I'm going to be biased, but St. Louis Cardinals should be ranked number one. And, you know, 11 of the past 15 years were always in October, you know, messing stuff up. So and, <laughs> watch and out. Bryce Harper, speaking of him, Bryce Harper actually had a thumb injury last year that kept him out part of the year. And he's saying that he's healthy now. He's actually in a little bit better shape now, too. So he, uh, he lost a little bit of weight. So. He'll be a he'll be a good guy to watch this year, maybe for a breakout season. He hasn't really had that MVP breakout year yet, and everyone kind of expected that out of uh, out of college. So, so bottom line, hot, <clears throat> not hot, hot. 
I'm going with not. So yeah. next one. That's, that's bold. <laughs> Arizona's own reserve guard, Gabe York, has undoubtedly made a huge impact this season to the Wildcat team. On Saturday night against Utah, he missed crucial free throws, but scored five of his 12 points in the last two minutes of the game. So heading into the tournament, are we thinking Gabe York right now is hot or not? I'll go ahead and start this one off. I think Gabe York's hot. I mean, he's he's shooting the ball the way Wildcat fans wanted him to. He's He started at the beginning of the season, as we all know, but was taken out of the lineup. And he kind of adds like that that bench score, that, that kind of like that player that comes in and can knock down threes. Um, one thing that I've noticed is he doesn't have any tattoos on his right arm. And I figure since, you know, just like Nick Young, Swaggy P said, he keeps the right arm strictly for buckets. So <laughs> so Gabe York, and especially one of those free throws that you said that he missed, yep. he got it on a putback. You know, so, you know, miss one free throw, get two points out of it. So Gabe York's playing some good basketball right now. I'm going to have to say hot. Yeah, he's uh, – Coach Sean Miller said after last game that he's playing the best basketball that he's seen uh, Gabe York play. Um, he had double-figure uh, double points – the uh, last three games, and he also has been playing great defense, according to Sean Miller as well. So yeah, no, I actually agree. So I'm gonna go with all around the boards, hot right I'm now. Going hot on that <laughs> one. Yep. Very hot right now. So <laughs> I agree. He's he's doing everything, and you know, it's, I think one of the things that's most memor or I don't know, proud of him, I guess, as a player, is he totally stepped out of his comfort zone on Saturday against Utah, and he wasn't out there, you know, taking the threes. He was shooting the floaters, the yep. finger rolls, everything. He's, he's driving to the hoop. And he's, Yeah, he's been driving yeah. the hoop all year. I mean, he's been doing better lately, but he's been working on that. I think he worked on it in the offseason yeah. a little bit, and he's been doing And that's well what makes that. him such a threat. Mm -hmm. It's someone that, you know, is usually just put in to knock down those threes from the outer ring, and then mm -hmm. all of a sudden now he's in here dunking those layups. So. Well, well, and, well, and <laughs> it, it, he has the athleticism. Oh, See, yeah. that's the thing, but it's just the way his position on the team, his role on the team – isn't a high flyer, yeah. so you know we got what, Stanley for that exactly. <laughs> so and and Rondé, and you have Rondé. All, all these other guys. So mm -hmm. if you get you know Gabe York on a fast break, that's that's just calling for trouble right there. So <laughs> Gabe York's a good ball player and definitely right now for yeah. the Wildcats. He'll be there. big time for us in the tournament. <laughs> Obviously, strictly for buckets. <laughs> well, although LeBron and his Cleveland Cleveland Cavaliers are only ranked at fifth seed. They're on a huge hot winning streak as they have won 16 of their last 20 games. Despite their rankings, could the Cavaliers be a threat in the playoffs because they're getting hot right now in the right time? Or is it just because the East is going a little downhill? <laughs> so, I mean, they, they did have a big win over the Warriors the other day. They also uh, <clears throat> crushed the Washington Wizards before that, a couple games before that, by uh, 40 points, actually. So they're, they're playing well, but... The thing I'm worried about is that LeBron James is just playing, uh, playing too too much selfish ball. He was the other uh, the other night when I was watching the uh, the game against the Rockets. He was doing one on one situations the whole time and having his the rest of his team spread out on the floor. And uh, he would just drive to the hoop and either kick it out or he would drive to the hoop and try to make a play at the hoop. And he was he was actually thir uh, 15 of 35 that game shooting, and he was three of 11 from the line, so he wasn't playing too well. LeBron <laughs> James, no, Cavaliers. Not hot. Not hot. The, don't get me wrong. Cleveland will compete in the Eastern Conference, but it's the Eastern Conference. Come on. The, the, I can grab the YMCA kids down here in Tucson, and they can compete in the East. The East is Ooh, Call them out. Exactly. The, the, the Cavaliers are not good at all. Here's why. They're, it's just they have so much talent on that team. I, just, I cannot see them. It's just they're not clicking right. And even though – J.R. Smith is playing like Denver Nuggets. J.R. Smith, they're still dealing with injuries. Kyrie's still hurt. Kevin Love is still trying to develop into the player that he know he can be. It's just right now, I see, I see the Cavaliers running the tables in the Eastern Conference. But when it comes down to you know playing a team like Golden State, if I were to, if I were to get Cavaliers and Golden State in a seven game series, I'm picking Golden State all the way because it's just I, I just I can't see the Cavaliers. They, they just have to add another piece. And I can see them adding JaVale McGee. If they were to add a guy like JaVale McGee, an athletic center, definitely. Yeah. We found his hot spot right here. It's, <laughs> but I'm going to agree with not on this one because although they have been hot, you know, obviously they're on a hot winning streak. No one can deny that. But the Eastern Conference is just not right now. And the Washington Wizards have gone 7 for 14. And at the beginning of the season, they were one of those top-tier teams. And the Chicago Bulls have gone – 
11 for 9, I think. D. Rose is out. Yeah, now Derrick Rose is out for the rest of the season. So, you know, (laughs) yeah, right now the Cavs are just capitalizing Mm -hmm. on their conference going down, but I don't think they're hot, and I agree with that. Yeah, I think there's probably six to seven teams in the the Western Conference that could beat the Cavaliers in playoffs. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's just like the National League versus American League Mm -hmm. in baseball. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Well, Arizona escaped the upset loss against Utah. But many college basketball teams saw Saturday as a day full of upsets. Wisconsin fell to number six, and Gonzaga fell four places to number seven. We already talked about Wisconsin, so heading into the tournament and despite their loss, is senior point guard Kevin Pangos and his Gonzaga Bulldogs hot or or not right now despite the loss? I'm going to say hot. Even though that they lost... This Gonzaga team is deadly. They got Kyle Wilger, <laughs> Kentucky transfer, who's easily their best player. He's a stretch forward. They have uh, Bell, and they also have Kevin Pangos. It's just the pieces are right. And you know what? This kind of reminds me of the, the team a, a couple seasons ago when they had Kelly Olenek. Even though that they're playing in a tough conference, <coughs> or excuse me, easy conference, they're still winning their games pretty handedly. And even though they, they stumbled against uh, St. Mary's, I feel like that could uh, definitely, uh, or excuse me, BYU. Yeah. I feel like that could definitely uh, help them in the tournament, kind of the same way Arizona lost to ASU. It, it's just, you know, heading into the tournament, their conference tournament with that loss, that could be huge. And if if I were to put CBYU and Gonzaga playing another game, I uh, put all my money on Gonzaga. Yeah, no, just like you said, they have such great players, and unlike the Cavs that we were just talking about, those players all do cl- all do click together, and well. you know. Gary Bell Jr. was just named Defensive Player of the Conference. Kevin Pangos just won the all-time West Coast Conference Player of the Year. And then Kyle Wilger just won, you know, the Best Newcomer of the Year. And all these guys are just coming in. They're doing great. Also, it's Pangos' senior season, and he's not going to let, you know, the tournament just slip out of his fingers. I know last year, unfortunately, to watch, because I'm a huge Aaron Kraft fan and a Buckeyes fan, but... Come on, you know, he yeah. let that game slip. His college career ended on a, and I know Pangos has the heart just as much as Kraft to not let it do it, and he also has a team to back him up, so. Yeah, they really they really don't have many quality wins coming into the tournament. I mean, they lost to us in overtime, which was actually probably one of their better losses. I mean, they, they lost to us in overtime, which is good for them, but they beat SMU. Um, they're number 22 right now, but SMU is not, not – one of the better teams in the tournament, so Lay they're going to have trouble. They're and you know, trouble, there I think. would be no way that Arizona would have beaten Gonzaga if it wasn't here at the McHale Center. Yeah. And not being harsh on Arizona, but that game was insane. Probably one of the best college basketball games I've been to, and I know that Arizona would not have won if it was on the road. Well, at that time, you're taking the, the number two team in the country and do overtime in their own place. Mm-hmm. That's just, you know, Gonzaga could definitely play some ball, and when they're playing the, the right opponent, when they – it's just like whenever you play great teams, you're going to play your A game. And when it comes down to the tournament, it's win or go home. And like you said, it's uh, Gary Bell uh, Jr.'s last season. He's definitely – a player like that is definitely not going to let uh, – And Kevin Pangos. And Kevin Pangos. I just, I well, just don't can... think they have a – I just don't think they have a superstar on their team that, that they can, you know, go to in times of need, you know, late in the game. I don't think they can rely on anyone. I mean, Pangos is good. Don't get me wrong. He's, he's not the, the scorer they need. He's not the superstar they need, so – I don't know. Yeah, well, honestly, hot, us three could sit here and argue mm-hmm. March Madness and college basketball all day, but we have to definitely take a quick break. So when we come back, we are going to talk a little NFL and which draft picks to look out for this April. All this and more coming up on UATV Channel 3 Sports. I'm Derek Williams, the former U of A Wildcat. You're watching UATV. Don't change the channel. Welcome back to UATV Channel 3 Sports. I'm your host, Zoe Walkwitz, alongside analysts Justin Spears and Kyle Shuck. The Super Bowl was a memorable one, and legends were made. But the sports world moves faster than Hussein Bolt and the NFL getting ready to pick the newest members of their squad. Big names are leaving college ball to go pro, like two of the past Heisman Trophy winners, 
Pac-12 foe Marcus Mariota and the infamous Jameis Winston will both enlist in this year's draft and hope to make another playoff run, but on a bigger field. We have to start with the caveat that Mariota and Winston play in completely different systems. And so, you know, it's not apples to apples when comparing them. But we can talk about both of these young players' strengths and weaknesses as quarterbacks. So, how are we going to start this one? <laughs> I'll go ahead and start off. So, we're doing both quarterbacks at the same time? Okay. Yes. Well... Marcus, I'll start with Marcus Mariota, great leader, Heisman winner. He knows what it takes to go out and win a championship, even though he didn't do it against Ohio State. Yeah. He got dinged up, though. He still played through and had a great game. It's just Ohio State was playing at good at the right time. But his weaknesses, I should say that his weaknesses is he kind of, sometimes in big situations, he doesn't take complete control of that game. He doesn't, he doesn't have that, that tenacity that you see a guy like Tom Brady have this season. You know, and I think that's one thing that Marcus Mariota will suffer in the NFL is the fact that he's at such a bigger stage, it will be hard for a player like that to convert. And maybe the Eagles will trade up for him. That might be uh, good for him, but I really don't see Marcus Mariota doing much in the NFL if he if he's in the wrong system just because of, he just seems like too much of a nice guy. No, see, this is where I say is I compare him kind of to Johnny Manziel. Mm -hmm. He's insanely successful and a crazy name, and you don't want to face him, you know, because he's amazing. But yeah. he plays such a running game, and a, he's a scram, you know, like does all this stuff that you're not going to do in the NFL. No. And he's not going to be able to transition at any rate as fast as Jameis Winston. Jameis Winston, even though he has 17 interceptions, and that's a scary number to say, but, you know, he knows how to throw it. He does do those throws that just, you know, like give you a – Space when you're watching, your and that's what that. that's what the <clears throat> NFL teams love. You know, when someone actually makes that 80 yard run <clears throat> and catch and goes into the end zone, and it's just Mariota loves to run. He's a great runner, but that is not going to fly in the NFL. Well, so and, he needs and, to fl flip his little style exactly again. transition. And, and you know what, Jameis Winston almost reminds me of like a uh, uh, Dante Culpepper. Dante Culpepper. You know, that's such a great throwback. Exactly. <laughs> you know, he's just he's big. He's he can he can move out of the pocket, yeah. even though. A lot of experts say that he's gained some weight. I don't think Jameis Winston's gained some weight. It might be muscle weight because he, he looks phenomenal right now. He's also a multi-sport athlete. He's playing baseball too. So it's just, I think Jameis Winston, he just he just has that, that NFL. He just has that NFL look. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, Jameis Winston. Body. Exactly. Mm -hmm. he, he's such a big quarterback. You know, I, I don't think he'll have, he'll be the next Jamarcus Russell. I think he'll, he'll be fine, uh, Jameis Winston. Even though he's got some off-field issues, what twenty? What twenty year old guy doesn't have some issues going on outside? I'm know? just worried about. <clears throat> I'm just worried about his media coverage when he comes to the NFL. <clears throat> I think he's gonna kind of blow it when he when he's talking, you know, into the mic. He already did. He, he said I mean, something about blown the MLB. it multiple yeah. times already. <laughs> but yeah, I think he'll continue to blow it in front of the mic. Um, I also think uh, a positive thing about Winston <clears throat> is that. Actually, his uh, Florida State offense is a NFL style offense. Yeah. So, Jabo Fisher's so got that nice the, offense. The Oregon offense for Mariota, <clears throat> God, the Oregon offense for Mariota is uh, is not really, or yeah, it's not as much. It's a spread offense. It's not as much an NFL offense. Mm -hmm. So, but Chip yes. Kelly is evolving the game. You know, bringing that, that or, bringing that Oregon style offense to Philly, even though they don't have Lashawn McCoy anymore. But R.I.P. to that too. Exactly, <laughs> and. But, and they're doing that type of offense with Nick Foles. So mm -hmm. the spread is developing there. It's not quite there yet. But if you were to choose between the, the two quarterbacks, even though Jameis Winston, you know, might be catching some crab legs on the side and, you know, just having a lot of off-field issues, mm -hmm. Jameis Winston will do just fine in the NFL. Yeah, you know, I I like Mariota. I think he's a, he's a better college ball player, I believe, than Winston. But, you know, NFL is something that's just totally different – Marriott is not going to be at the same like pace of learning curve as Winston is, and that's what's going to kill him. Nice, yeah. nice guys don't last in the NFL, <laughs> except Peyton Manning. <laughs> hey, Tom Brady. And Tom Brady. Well, Tom Brady, he's, he's kind of he's got he's got that swagger to him, that nice swagger. Yeah. So, and most people don't know this, but uh, these two quarterbacks, Mariota and Winston, are the only two that are going to be going in the first couple rounds. There's there's not much depth this year at quarterback. There's way more depth at running back. There's not as much at quarterback. So. These two guys are really important for whoever gets St. them. St. Louis Rams need a quarterback, so. <laughs> but I I don't really like Jameis Winston and all of his off-the-field yeah, drama. He's too sketch off the field. I know. 
whatever. But anyways, we cap this edition off of the show off per usual with a game of 30 seconds. In this game, the analyst and I each have half a minute to voice any particular topic in sports of our choosing. Justin, why don't you start us off? Today, Jim Harbaugh in Michigan saving two women from a car accident. Wow. You know, who like, you know, the fact that, you know, you see a coach leaving an NFL team and come to Michigan, you know, kind of have a quiet offseason, made a splash recruiting wise, but to see him go out and do such a such a public thing like that is definitely uh looking good on his part and it's definitely a nice way to start off the the off season for Michigan. Definitely. Well, yeah, especially because he has a, you know, everyone will say that he's a great coach, but when it comes to him as an actual guy, yeah, people aren't a fan. So mm -hmm. I <laughs> that's like, going to make people a fan. Who doesn't like that? I, I mean, I want Jim Harbaugh to save me from a car accident. So. <laughs> That'd be pretty it's sweet. Like Superman. <laughs> <laughs> All right, your turn, Kyle. So I hate to do this. So the Eagles, the Philadelphia Eagles, are my favorite NFL team. I've been a fan since Donovan McNabb. Now, they traded LaShawn McCoy today, the running back, the stud running back, who's had the most yards total out of any running back in the last five years in the NFL, to the Bills. And they traded him for a linebacker who actually tore his ACL last year, Kiko Alonzo. He's coming off that injury. Um, this is just supposed to help them defensively. They, they had a bad defense last year. Um, but I just I don't like the move overall because that just leaves a big hole in the running back position. You know, they only have Darren Sproles on the Eagles now. Um, I guess they could – end up, uh, if they get a, a higher pick in the draft, they could end up getting a running back. Like I said earlier, they have a, there is a, a good depth at running back this year um, in the draft. So I just don't like the move uh, completely as a fan, just because LaShawn McCoy was such a pivotal part of our team. Oh yeah, years. I had that guy on my um, fantasy, fantasy football. Mm -hmm. You racked me up like 20, 30. He is a beast <laughs> at fantasy, so. I know, all right, well, I'll close this out. So my 30 seconds is gonna be about James Harden and LeBron James just going at it. And honestly, I hate LeBron. I'm going to be honest. I don't really care if I say that. But I just thought it was hilarious that James Harden not just kicked him, but kicked him in the groin and, you know, close to just a place you just don't want to go. Like, And he did that on national TV. I don't know what was going on, but he might be my new favorite player. And then as if that wasn't a big enough thing, and overtime, they got into another skirmish, and the refs just did not call anything because they weren't trying to get into a 10 seconds left in overtime. But, wow, probably my new favorite player. <laughs> I can't wait to see those two go off and I know, uh, go head-to-head awesome. head in the playoffs. I'm, well, I'm it, it's, it's James Harden, it, and LeBron actually missed those free throws right there at the end. If you got mm -hmm. a, some, I know, it's you, a choke. If you, got oh. some, if you got some pain where the sun don't shine, you can definitely uh, miss your, your game-winning free throws. So. Oh, uh, excuses, excuses. He James Harden, kudos. <laughs> he was 3 of 14 that game from one. That's Him terrible. Him and Stanley, That's I terrible. see the comparison. That's just terrible. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, that will do it for this week's episode of Channel 3 Sports. Check out our previous shows online, and make sure to tune in again next week. For Justin Spears and Kyle Shook, I'm Zoe Walkwitz signing off and wishing you all a terrific Tuesday. You're watching Channel 3 Sports on UA TV.